Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin, back from my mental health sabbatical. I had a really bad bout with depression in the last few days and some physical health issues, and you just pile all that in together, and yeah, not fun. But I'm here today. I do exist. <laughs> Um, today the Preds took on the Ottawa Senators and the Atlantic Gladiators took on the Orlando Solar Bears. Why can't more games start at six o'clock? Right. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but in all kidding uh aside, um both were good games. Um but before we get into that. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Now, as I said, the Predators did take out the Ottawa Senators. Um, the Ottawa Senators have been having an up-and-back season. They'll be good for a couple games, and then they'll just go on a slump. Yeah. Um, so, let's get in it. All right. Well, shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshoots Ottawa 11 to 7. In the second period, Ottawa outshoots Nashville 13 to 11. In the third period, Ottawa outshoots Nashville 14 to 6. And in total, Ottawa outshoots Nashville 35 to 28. <clears throat> Both teams were an even 50% on the faceoff circle. Nashville went 0 for 3 with 8 penalty minutes, while Ottawa went 0 for 3 with 8 penalty minutes. Both teams put up 19 hits. Ottawa put up 25 blocked shots to Nashville's 15. Ottawa put up 13 giveaways to Nashville's 10. Ottawa put up 12 takeaways to Nashville's 7. Scoring in the first period for the Predators was Michael McCarron, Scoring his seventh of the year at the 826 mark, assisted by Yossi, his 33rd, and Tomasino, his 13th. Then at the 1630 mark for Nashville, Tomasino scores his sixth of the year with an assist from Novak, his 14th, and Glass, his second. Then at the 1900 mark, um, Trennan scores his eighth of the year, assisted by Fabro, his eighth, and Yossi, his 34th. Then scoring in the second was Drake Matherson, his 17th with an assist from Brady Kachuk. That was at the 521 mark. Um, that was a wrist shot. And then at the 920 mark of the second, uh, Tim Stutzel scored his 11th with an assist from Joseph, his 15th. That was a snapshot. Then Brady Kachuk in the second scores his 21st with an assist from Josh Norris, his 12th at the 17-10 mark with a wrist shot. That not in it all up at three. No scoring in the third, so we go to overtime. And overtime at the 336 mark, Claude Giroux scores his 15th with an assist from Tim Stutzel, his 36th. The Preds drop their... Well, they got a point, so that's going to throw that all off. But uh, in their last 10, they're 4, 5, and 1. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, I, I honestly believe if we lose to L.A., and... The deadline is the eighth. So if they lose one, two, two three, four, five, six, seven. And 
So they have 10 games next month. If they lose five, they're done. Right. I would sell. If they lose five games next month out of the 10, I would sell. Um, the Preds now sit. Yes, they're tied with a wild card spot, but they're not really tied with a wild card spot. Um, St. Louis has two games in hand, and LA has three. If LA beats us, then they, you know that's a that's a problem. You add into this the teams we play are the Coyotes, the Devils. Stars, so those two are going to be tough. The Blues, you drop that one, you can cut, scratch that off. Along with a loss to LA, wouldn't help. Um, then they play Vegas, the Kings again. So if they lose again to the Kings, if you lose to the Sharks, just trade everyone. Um, then they play at the Ducks, uh, play Senators again, and then the Wild. Um, there is a West Coast swing at the end of February. Um, it is going to be very difficult for us to cover that, given um, I believe we also have a homestand during that time. No, um, covering that um, that Thursday game with the uh, Preds at Kings, it's going to be borderline impossible. Would you like to know why? Sure. The, well, we play the Wolves at 11 o'clock in the morning for the Admirals. Oh, wow. And then the Preds play at 9.30 at night our time. Um, With, uh, with me having kids and stuff, that just makes it really hard, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I honestly I, I just don't think it looks good for the Prince. Um so on to other news. Well we've got the Atlantic Gladiators versus the Orlando Solar Bears. Yep. All right, shots on goal in the first period. Both teams had 10 shots in the second period. Orlando outshoots Atlanta 11 to 8. In the third period, Orlando outshoots Atlanta 19 to 3. And in total, Orlando outshoots Atlanta 40 to 21. Uh, Atlanta goes one for two on the power play with 22 minutes, 11 infractions, while Orlando goes one for eight with 10 minutes, five infractions. Alrighty, come, come on, come on, <laughs> come on. You know you want to work. All right, scoring in the first was Cody Sylvester with his thirteenth, with an assist from Jackson Pearson. Uh, then scoring was Luke Prokop with his fourth, with an assist from Jackson Pearson and Cody Sylvester. That goal was on the power play. By the way, the first goal scored was shorthanded. Yeah. Uh, Robert Calistilla, Calista, Calista, scoring shorthanded as well. Apparently, don't go into the penalty box against our organization. Apparently, we're really good at killing them. Uh -huh. Um. Then scoring for Orlando was Mitchell Holcher with an assist from Jackie, Jesse Jacquees and Derek Angeli. Or Derek Angeli. Sorry, Derek Angeli. And then, well, that was at the 1821 in the third. At the 1838, same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Mitchell Hosher with an assist with the primary going to Angeli and the secondary going to Jaquiz, where in the other one it's Jaquiz with the secondary going to Angeli. Um Orlando's now won two straight. Woohoo! We're going streaking. Mm -hmm. Don't get scared now. 
<laughs> but um you know I'm uh, very interested to see what happens over the next week or so. Um, in other news, the uh, NHL Network A and AHL TV will carry for free, if I remember correctly, for all people who are paid. Otherwise, you got to buy the competition. But if you believe NHL Network, TSN, and AHL TV will be carrying the All-Star Games. Um, tomorrow's games are um, San Diego at Milwaukee at 6.30, uh, Manitoba at Rockford at 7, and Colorado at Ontario at 7 Pacific Standard Time, which is like 9 o'clock our time. Um, the Capitals and the Hershey Bears have extended their affiliation through 2029-2030. Okay. So their goalies are Alex Daylock for San Diego and Cal Clay. Okay. Um, they also have Thomas uh Sukunik. Sunik? Sukunik. Um yeah, not so sure how I feel about. Uh, them as they in their last 10 are 6, 3, and 1. Um, we are officially over halfway through the season for the Admirals, as there are 34 games left. Um, What's your biggest shock right now, as far as the system's concerned? I don't know. Um, as far as the system's concerned, uh... Probably how well Milwaukee's been playing lately. Yeah. Um, it just everything seems like just seems to be clicking right now. Yeah, they're they're a team who's on a um uh what do you call it a downhill run, but they're going full speed. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, at this point, you need to get as many points as you can. Lock up that division, you know, lock up the division. Right. That way, you know, you get a little break. You don't got to play in the, in the plan or none of that mess. Like you've had to do in years past. Right. Now take that, get that, get that week off so you can get healthy. Be prepared. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, you know, the other thing is, is I think that the surprise is uh, Soros. Soros has not. Soros is at 500 now. Yeah. Soros is not having the greatest year. No, he's not. Um, There comes a small moment, and, and I've been kind of edging on this, if this team can't get their confidence back, then where do you look? Right. 
Where do you look to get it back? Because if the coach can't do it, if the captain can't do it, then we have a really big problem. Right. You know, and 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 my question is, is how quick before the turnaround? Because I wouldn't be surprised to see Nashville start sniffing soon. Not on the basis that they that they're out of the playoff picture, but on the basis of going, well, there are some pretty there's some teams out there with some young talent, and we have a lot of guys to offer for sale. Right. Um got a bunch of guys going into the contract years. We'll be getting into that after the trade deadline. Um this weekend, I know I've said the last couple weekends I was going to do in the system. This last weekend, I wasn't there. Um, I was, like I said, dealing with mental health and physical health issues at the same time. Um, for those of you, if you've ever known what the feeling of having um, like icy hot on a knot feels like, and then someone punching you there. <laughs> wow. That's what my back felt like all weekend. So, um, that is why I did not attend the Admirals game on Friday. That is why um, I was very quick to leave where I was on Sunday, even though I really didn't care to be there. Um, but if and you can see the admirals pull off tomorrow um that's 11 wins yeah <laughs> you know All right um yarrow's been on fire Troy's been on fire. I, I I don't think it matters who you put in, but I would I would imagine that Yarrow starts tomorrow. Yeah. And that Troy starts on, on Friday, and then we go into the break. Um, as far as the break is concerned, that is also our break. We're gonna take uh that time off. Um if anything insane happens, like you know, we'll we'll either post a photo or video or something like that, like sharing it. Um, but we are going to take the time to spend some time with our families as we prepare also mentally to go at it again because right after All-Star is Um, you know, that push for the playoffs. Yeah. Every team's going to be doing it. And the teams at the top got to stay good to, to stay there. Yeah, they do. You know, um, I, I know that last year we had had a little bit of a slump towards that time of the year because we were sellers. You know? And just so you guys all know, yes, I dropped the mouse. <laughs> hmm. uh, but get the mouse get the mousey <laughs> mm -hmm. if you know you know I'm sorry I dated myself but um you know uh, I, I honestly I'm a Preds fan through and through this was tough to watch a three goal lead evaporate um Honestly, I really don't know how to feel. Um, there are small questions like, did they make the right choice in head coach? Does Trotz know enough about being a GM? There are questions that 
Preds fans, I'm not saying me. I'm saying this is what I see. Remember, we're a show by fans for fans. So I'm going to talk about what the fans are saying. And the fans are starting to call for his head. Already. Now, I will say this. Uh, they've lost a lot of close games. But that doesn't, you know, they don't stack up against a team like Edmonton. Like, they don't have anybody of McDavid's caliber. Yeah. You know? Here's the thing. You can keep Forsberg, Yossi, and O'Reilly. You can trade Nyquist if you want to. But he's having a really good year here. And it's really yeah. clicking with that Forsberg and O'Reilly line. So I'm not going to complain there. What I am going to say is there's going to be a clear out at some point because they're not going to want to keep guys like Kemmel and Svechkov and LaRue in Milwaukee. Much longer. They're playing too well here. All right. And at some point, they're going to call them up to get them a cup of coffee. You know, or yeah. they'll 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 wait till the halfway mark, which is exactly what they did with um um uh Geary Gurianov Gurianov will have to go through waivers, but we'll see what happens there. <clears throat> um, but my my opinion is I don't know exactly which direction the Preds are going to go. All right, I don't know where we sit. What I do know is Nashville doesn't like firing coaches. But they will if they have to. All right. We got about a minute and a half. I saw it. Um, okay. You know, uh, is it Saros having an off year? Or is it Brunette? Or is it the system? Is it they brought in Luke Shen and didn't call up Statsny or Del Gaizo. Is it one of those situations? Is Carrier or Fabro on the moon set move since it's a contract year for both of them on the defensive side? There's got to be room move opened up. I believe Lazan is also a free agent at the end of this year. So there's all there's a lot to answer for Prince fans. Um, we will get more into that tomorrow evening with our show tomorrow. Be it that we only have one game. So I'm gonna be looking for yeah, Philly. So <laughs> make sure to check in tomorrow.